it has proved to be unnecessary. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Moana Mackey. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. What an extraordinarily bad speech from a member who claims to be environmentally friendly. What an extraordinary rewriting of history. I don't know whether she actually believes what she just said or whether she just decided to leave out quite a few key facts in that. And what an extraordinary contradiction of terms from a member who started off saying that they didn't support Labor's biofuel bill because it didn't have any sustainable standards in it, that Jan Wright criticised the bill because of that. She left out the fact that, of course, that uh, piece of work from Jan Wright was done before Labor made amendments to the bill to put sustainable standards in it. And it was when uh, uh, Labor's bill that was amended to do that alongside uh, Jeanette Fitzsimons and Matilda Tude, who were on that select committee which I chaired. But now she's saying, well, actually, we don't need any sustainable um, standards in the legislation because there are no biofuels in New Zealand. We actually think that's a problem on this side of the House, that the national government has killed biofuel production in this country. And we don't think it's good enough to say that we don't need environmental standards because there's so little and they'll just self-regulate. When we see what happened with Cadbury's and the use of palm oil, um, and it was actually public protest that forced them to back down. And it shouldn't have to come to public protest to get good legislation in place to protect the environment and to support an industry which is going to be very important to the future of New Zealand, especially in terms of security of supply. Labor will very proudly be supporting this piece of legislation that the national government is going to vote down today. And I want to take uh, the member who just resumed her seat back to what actually happened at the time. Labor put in place a biofuels obligation now, for a long time, the industry had been saying they were going to do it, and it didn't happen. So what we said was that over time, from 2008 to 2012, we would move from 0.5% of petrol and diesel sold on an energy equivalence basis up to 2.5% in 2012. And the industry would have to make sure that two point, by 2012, 2.5% of the fuel they were selling was biofuel. Now, we did this in a way which was very flexible. They could choose to do it through the petrol pumps, as Gull did, as Mobile then acted to do, or they could sell product directly to customers, for example, 100% biodiesel, and meet their obligation that way. That was up to, up to the industry. But it did two very important things. Firstly, it provided some certainty for the fledgling biofuel industry in New Zealand that there was going to be a market for their products. Based on that, they were able to invest in their companies because they knew the market would be there. That was a certainty that they hadn't had before. And you know what was so great about it? It cost the government nothing. No expensive subsidies, nothing. It was merely an obligation that provided certainty to a sector that needed that certainty. And the biofuel sector welcomed it. Now, when we chose what that level of obligation was going to be, we were very cognizant of the amount of biofuel that was currently available in New Zealand. We didn't want to force these um, uh, the oil companies have to go offshore and bring in unsustainable biofuels. And what we knew was there was more than enough biofuel already in production in New Zealand and planned for production once the industry had that certainty to meet the obligation. To meet that 2.5% obligation, they could do it from sustainable sources in New Zealand. So the bill went to select committee and then the Green Party quite rightly raised that we should do some work on sustainability standards for the legislation. And I was chairing the Local Government and Environment Select Committee at that time. And I can tell you, we worked incredibly hard, both in the committee, outside of the committee, with Energy Minister David Parker at the time, to come up with some sustainability standards that could go into the core legislation. Now, a lot of it, the, the guts of it will be done in regulation, but what the submitters told us was that there was enough of a steer in primary legislation to make it clear what was going to be acceptable and what wasn't going to be acceptable uh, once those regulations were put in place. And the principles of, of those sustainability standards were around they actually had to produce less greenhouse gas than fossil fuel. There's no point saying you can have a biofuel and that's great because it's a biofuel when in fact it emits more greenhouse gas emissions than petrol does. So we put in um, some clear sustainability standards around that. The second, we didn't want it to compete with food production. We didn't want um, food that should be going to, to feeding people suddenly uh, those farmers realising they could make more money out of biofuels because of the massive subsidies in some countries overseas. Um, so we made it clear that, that both in terms of, of downstream effects as well, that we didn't want to see food production impacted by this. And the third one uh, was around biodiversity and ensuring that, that we're not using biofuels that have actually contributed to a, a decrease in biodiversity around the world. 
Now, it, don't underestimate how much work went into getting those standards to a point where the Green Party was comfortable with it, the Labour Party was comfortable with it, and the Select Committee was comfortable with it. A lot of work went into that, and I think it was actually very, very good um, legislation. And I really want to commend the officials who worked on that piece of uh, legislation, because they were absolutely fantastic. They were enthusiastic about drafting these, um, these sustainability standards. They said to us, this is doable. We can have the regs for these in place by the middle of 2009. That is not a problem. You've given us enough of a steer that we know it can be done. And then what we know is that, is that all the biofuels that would be being used in New Zealand would meet those sustainability standards. And as I said before, there is more than enough um, feedstock in New Zealand to meet that obligation, uh, be it ethanol as a waste product of the dairy industry or tallow, um, um, again, from, from the agriculture industry. More than enough that was already going on in New Zealand. And one of the oil companies, Mobile Oil, actually moved before the legislation came into place because they saw the writing was on the wall. They saw that there was a competitive advantage for them getting in there early, being able to say, you know what, we got in there and we're grabbing this with both hands, we're not going to complain about it. And they started introducing ethanol into their petrol blends at, um, at, at their service stations. And some of the other oil companies, as I said before, indicated they'd probably just sell direct product to, um, to bulk customers in order to meet their obligation that way. And it cost the taxpayers of New Zealand nothing. Nothing. It was a simple way of getting some kind of scale in an industry that was fledging, that was struggling to get on its feet, and that's very, very important to the future of New Zealand. And then we had a change of government. And what happened was one of the very first pieces of legislation they repealed was the biofuel bill. And what did they replace it with? At a time when there was no money, when they were slashing and burning and, and crying about how poor we were, they put in place a $36 million subsidy fund. So what Labor was doing for free to the taxpayers of New Zealand, National put a $36 million subsidy fund, which has been an absolute and utter failure, a total failure. It is not what the sector wanted. There's been no certainty for them. Because it's a year-by-year -year appropriation, they're not actually able to plan because they don't know how much of it they're going to get. And lo and behold, here we are with Minister Phil Heatley saying it's going. Basically, it's going because of low uptake. Well, the low uptake has been because it was a shambles from start to finish. It wasn't what the industry wanted. And extraordinary that something that was happening for free National wants to put subsidies in in order to make it happen, and it didn't work. So they repealed the legislation. And what was their reason for repealing that bill? Oh, well, because there aren't any um, sustainability standard regulations yet. <laughs> well, there aren't any at all now. And by the way, there's also very little biofuel being produced in New Zealand because of this government's complete inability to come up with any kind of coherent plan to ensure that the sector has the certainty that they need to invest. Now, when Jerry Brownlee repealed that piece of legislation, there was a $10 million biofuel plant that was mothballed on the basis of that decision. Because they had thought that the government was going to provide them with that certainty. They had made investment decisions based on that, and Jerry Brownlee and the National Party pulled the rug out from underneath them. That $10 million plant was mothballed. That gentleman lost money. And now we find ourselves in a situation where finally the National Party have just admitted that they're not going to do anything about biofuels. The subsidy scheme's going. Um, they're not going to, for what there is, they don't really care if it's sustainable or not, so why do we need sustainability standards? But to stand up and try and argue on environmental grounds that you're getting rid of a piece of legislation on environmental grounds is just so galling that it beggars belief. So galling that it beggars belief. This is a good piece of legislation. When we have a Labour government at the next election, we will be acting on biofuels. We want them to be sustainable. We will be putting in place policy that actually supports the industry, doesn't undermine them and pay lip service to them. And I look forward to seeing this piece of legislation once again when we have a Labour government that takes its environmental commitments seriously, that takes its energy and security of supply commitments seriously, and we will see these sustainable, um, these, these sustainable biofuel principles back. It's a shame it's going to be voted down today. But I, can I just please implore National Party members, don't stand up and try and tell us that this is on environmental grounds that you are opposing this piece of legislation. Because frankly, it's painful to listen to, 
and it's just embarrassing, embarrassing from members who claim to have environmental credibility, who claim to be blue-greens. Please just be honest. This is actually about the fact that National does not think that the biofuel industry has any future in New Zealand and therefore is not prepared to support it. Maggie Barry. Um, I 